hello everyone and uh, thank you for your introduction um, and I'm glad to be here. So I'm gonna jump right into it. Um, like I said, I'm gonna go through our developer studio journey and hopefully this journey will give you ideas about success metrics when launching your portal or even the portal you have today uh, and so forth. So, and, you, and there's my link in case you wanna connect with me and things like that. So as we're going right into it, so I'm gonna go through our journey, which started in 2021. Um, success criteria that we kind of laid out, metrics that connect with that, and ultimately some takeaways uh, I'll have at the end. So how did our journey start, right? So I have a lot of words, but um, listen to the sound of my voice as we move along. So we came uh, to this company, uh, we started a team, and we had an issue, right? Um, as you can see here, right? Our customers and our product teams, right? We had two personas uh, that we had to solve a problem for. Our customers were lacking a unified developer port. Right, for all the products, right? Every product team had a different thing. Right? Fiserv is a big company with hundreds of products, and therefore it didn't have a consistent developer experience, right? They weren't unified, they had different experiences for each one. Um, they didn't have coherent information architecture as well, right? Everything was different on every site almost. And we even had overlap of products. So what do you do? Now, all that, of course, adds up to a lack of a smooth and quick integration for APIs. And, and we all know, you know, uh, startups and fintechs and all those kinds of things want to be able to move quickly, right? It's to, to market is what's really important. So you know, part of it was identifying this problem, understanding it, and then what did our customers deserve, right? Well, a unified, consistent developer experience for all the products, easy discovery for everything, and then self-service, right? That takes everything from months down to minutes, basically. And I think, and, and that was like one pillar, right? One persona. But we also had uh, product teams, right? Again, we had many products. And if we were going to think about a unification of everything, each product team needs to be able to easily load, manage their content, and define their API integration workflows, right? Um, not everyone just uses Apigee or not everyone is just a simple key. Some of them ask a lot more information. There's a lot of back and forth, right? How do we define that and still make a seamless experience for whether you're using product A or product B, right? And standardize across that. So what did they need? What do they deserve, right? Well, automation and governance, because then we have consistency consistency, right? Treat documentation as code. Uh, so they can check in things, reversion, manage stuff. But they also need self-service for content management, how they upload stuff, how they uh, moderate their own information, and then how they define their workflow into a still a, the same portal, basically. So all that was, was really important, right? And, that, and when we started that journey, we thought, okay, this is what we want to do. Um, and, and it's not an easy problem to solve, right? Uh, we have a lot going on. And so what was really important was then defining the success criteria, right? Because, you know, it, we're not going to get it done in just one day, right? Or even one year, who knows, right? It's a big multi-year kind of journey. And so for our team, we wanted to make sure we defined the North Star to make sure everyone was guided. And then from North Star, you see the 2021 OKRs that we kind of drafted. Uh, spoiler alert, obviously, uh, not all of this we made uh, in the sense that we hit every one of these. Um, but at least the North Star for us was, you know, radically wanted to change the developer experience to provide untold levels of enjoyable productivity. So they can do things right away very quickly. And, you know, we prioritize the developer experience first, right? Our customers was what we wanted to target. And you know, this becomes the one asset that a developer needs to learn, play, build, deploy, monetize, build, uh, commune with our products and, uh, and teams, whether your APIs, apps, or services, right? And it becomes the cornerstone of our developer relations ecosystem right, as you come to the, the studio. Um, and then, you know, from there, of course, we get uh, lo uh, lower into, like, what are we actually going to then try to achieve this year, right? Well, yes, we said we want the best portal experience, you know, high MPS score, win awards, all those kinds of things. But you also see in bullet number two that we also define metrics for the product teams, right? So we weren't just thinking about developers, but we also thought about product teams because, remember, we saw on that other slide, they have problems as well, right? We wanted them to have a great experience, right? We wanted them to onboard their products as quickly as possible because if we did that, we'd have more products uh, into the developer studio to then you, for customers to use. And of course, we wanted to make it the go place, go to place. We had a ton of data active users, use it in hackathons and, and things like that. So we were dreaming big, right? Which is, you know, the good thing to do. And then you, as you move along, reality sets in, you start thinking about, you know, how do we actually build this? What is the core problem we're going to have to build? And with that, and I'll jump to then what was our answer? 
Uh, our answer was a luxury apartment complex, uh, which is why I show this picture here. And uh, I say that because it's really just an analogy for what we decided to do. We wanted to make a portal, right, the developer studio, that any developer can come to get stuff, but any product team can put their things in there and then have that governance and standardization. And that's why we call them tenants, because what we're going to define, just like an apartment, we've built the structure. This is what the building looks like. These are all the amenities that everybody uses. So meaning search is like the pool. It's the same for everybody. You come here, you get it, and it's a consistent experience for the developer. Um, the API Explorer is the same. The way you read documentation is the same. Um, the information architecture is, is the same. But then that tenant, right, that product team that now lives in this apartment, brings and decorates their apartment in any way they want. Right? They load their content. They manage their content uh, and so forth. But again, following our guidelines, and then we can add validation on top, um, you know, making sure the reading level that's written is a certain way, making sure links all work, things like that, right? So then it's consistent for every team. And that ultimately solves for loading and consuming documentation and allowing for API experimentation. And another little quick spoiler, right? We incrementally built it, and we did it in nine months. We started in January, and we went to production in September. And we started by solving that same core problem first. How do we load all the information we need from tenants, all right, all these different tenants in a distributed way, and then present all that right to that developer in a single uh, look and feel and experience for everybody. So we actually built the first uh, minimum valuable experience actually in three sprints, uh, which is just six weeks uh, because we had two week sprints. So we, we did all that, but even if we did all that, as you meant, as I showed earlier, what are the metrics to prove we were really successful uh, in that? Now, I'll jump to this here to show this. We have user research metrics and usage metrics that we thought were very important. And I'm going to show you some live information um, as we went through this journey. I'll show you even the things we just scratched on paper. It's like we want this, we thought thinking big, and then how we refined everything. So from a user testing, uh, we wanted layer uh, layout, interactions that we could measure, micro copy feedback, any other qualitative feedback we can get. Um, on the usage side, you said, again, we want engagements, right? Number of accounts created. And again, a little information here. We already, within uh, just last year, when we launched create accounts for everybody, within like four or five months, over the, even over the Christmas holiday, we already had 291 users show up. Uh, how many businesses is that really? 178. Uh, API keys, 228 just from the 178 users alone. Uh, search was important because, as I mentioned, we have search within our studio. What were they actually searching for, right? What was popular? And then we were also curious about what are people searching on Google search? And then where were they landing, right? What are the popular pages? What are also popular interactions? So we uh, here I'm showing in a very nice slide, but I'm about to show you next is the raw data um, and so forth. So let me jump into really quick here, as I mentioned, User testing was important to us, right? And our design team and validating everything, right? Because we had an idea, right? We had an instinct told us we, we want to do this. But as we moved along, sprint by sprint, we collected information, right? To help us navigate us. Um, like, you know, how does create account work? What are the people are feeling? Right? What do they wish they had? What was some negative things? And as we go through different personas, we, you know, again, looked at different concepts, A versus B, and then got tried to hard data what people actually liked or didn't like. And as I mentioned, even for micro copy, we were like, does workspaces make sense to you or the word dashboard, right? So because we want people to just um, recognize what to do, not just recall, right? Um, and things like, because they never have to remember, but if they can see, see it and it just clicks, they can just go forward much quicker. So we collected all that kind of data and that told us what we should or should not be doing, right? Even as we were moving along, right? We're changing direction as we go. Our instincts provided us with a foundation of what to do and then the data allowed us to change direction as we needed. And I'm gonna switch over really quick to this other screen here where I'm gonna show you again, this the raw ideas, right? We just threw a list together really quick, but then we refined. Right. You know, so now we just really want these things. But even though we, we did put a list together to think about all these things as we were moving along, um, and then we listed out Google events. And we even made it such that um, we wanted to make sure that as part of our definition of done, whether you're a designer, whether you're an engineer, think about uh, analytics we want to track, right? Think about those kinds of things. So we define what's important on the home page, what's important on the support page, uh, and so forth. What's exactly what we're tracking on search kinds of things. And then we go ahead and implement what we can 
um, that's important in priority order. Right? So we do those kinds of things. And I'll show you right here because I have the analytics open where, you know, from when we launched September 1st all the way to 2023 today, you can see how many users came to our site now, right? Uh, and we can, we're using Google Analytics. I'm not a guru necessarily, but it gave us some initial data that we can talk to our partners, right? Our upline executives to show that, you know, you had this problem, we set out to solve this problem, and here's the data to prove that it is successful. You know, uh, we can start seeing how many people coming directly, organic search, uh, as you see down here. People were actually Googling, you know, for a client line, which is one of the products, and they're landing here. Uh, they even Google for a developer portal. Uh, as you said, some people think, is it portal? Is it studio? But they're they're getting here, which is important, right? We know popular pages as well, like Commerce Hub, master uh, data is very important, which then I can take that information and go back to my product teams, right? Because I'm also thinking about them and giving them access to the data so they know what's important, what they should or should not surface and what they should, you know, uh, clean up uh, basically. And as I mentioned here, right, um, I can see the pages um, right here again, what's again, what's popular, the queries that they're really Googling for and stuff like that, that's really amazing. Um, and then here again, engagement metrics that tell me, you know, what are they, you know, really doing, right? Um, especially like things like popular pages, as I mentioned again, which Google help, helps me show this, like, as I see here, they're definitely hitting, um, a lot of the home pages, solution pages, they're trying to figure out what to do, right? And there's path exploration and so forth. Um, and even here I can know exactly which API is popular and which version, um, uh, they're, they're looking at. And then again, I pass that back down to those product teams so they know, you know, what they should do, um, you know, maybe perhaps they should start a guide, you know, to ex really explain how to use this because this is very popular um, and so forth. And I can see that um, in some of the events um, here. So I talked about interactions and events, right, uh, previously. And here I can even track, oops, and this is the raw data if you see here, right, how many accounts, as I mentioned, were created. Right. And this will now load the data since our since September 15th of 2022 when we launched to create accounts. Total users, right? Whether they actually click on it and they follow through or not. I can see that information obviously by country. Um, that also gives me an idea of you know which uh, which places are most popular and what products those regions are, you know, are driving towards. I think that's really amazing. And What's really cool also is, like I said, I started making sure I could track API keys because this is how then I told management um, and even my own team to keep them excited and engaged. Like, look how many people are creating accounts, right? Look how many people are actually creating keys and doing things with the, the API keys. Um, you know, that really then shows that that has tangible value. It's really being used um, that I can share with people and tell people what's going on. And then, you know, the other type of metric I talked about was the, um, uh, interaction stuff. So for example, editor split, right? One of the cool things on our developer studio, for example, was when we built this, and here's an example, here's Banking Hub adding credit, you have response request, and you looked at it this way, uh, we put full screen in here, but if full screen wasn't even enough. We said, well, you know, as our team was brainstorming, split view. Is anyone really clicking on split view, right? We, then we can try out features and functionality. We can get, again, hard data again to know if things were working, not working. If no one's clicking on on this feature that maybe it wasn't really worth putting out there and you know do we remove it um you know because now it's just cluttering right uh, and we can use that real estate for other things that's you know important for us in terms of studio but then what's also important is i'll show you here code snippets as an example so for example um let's see how popular java is right so as you see here on developer studio you know a lot of other portals right you have different code snippets you can choose uh, and so forth, but which ones are popular, right? Maybe that's something the product team is interested in because then they can use that information, like say 37 users all clicking to see Java code snippets be, instead of, for example, uh, let's look at Go, right? Go, as the data loads here, and we, when we release this feature in November, only 15. So then now we have this information that the product teams can decide, you know what, maybe they should be building an SDK in Java first, right? If they, you know, if they were out down this path thinking what kind of SDK should we build first to connect these APIs, maybe Java makes more sense. And this would be the fastest thing that they could do that has a uh, quick value to, to people. So those were kind of like all the metrics as we started going along, brainstorming really big, showing success. Uh, and 
showing us how we can keep changing what we're doing, right? Giving us direction and, and so forth. So let me go back here really quick. Oops. So those are a lot of the metrics uh, that we thought about. And I showed, I showed you some live raw data and stuff like that. Um, now, did it work out? Um, and uh, as Laura mentioned, right, we, you know, it did work out in, in 2022. We were honored with the Webby for the best mobile visual design. We had our special call outs for the Dev Portal Awards. And just recently, we won the 2023 Devi uh, Awards, right, for, for best innovation in the industry, uh, financial industry. So I think, you know, the way we were moving, tracking our metrics, understanding what's going on, surfacing information, uh, keeping even our own team engaged, right, and knowing what they're doing and building is a value. I think it, it really, really worked out. And some of the takeaways, as I wanted to mention here, was listening to your instincts to start, right? You can always get stuck in this rat hole of getting, oh, let's get all these data, let's spend six months, let's design, let's design a lot of proto uh, prototypes and things like that, but it won't get you to value quickly, right? You know something with your instincts, you know if it's right or wrong, go forward with it, and then as you move along, collect data to you know, change the direction where you need to go. And that's why you know, once you set your North Star, you, North Star, you know where you're going and you can adjust your waypoints uh, as you need. Uh, and then, of course, with that, once you have these all set up together, like, that's why they kind of you know, chains together, the priority is to solve the core problem, right? As I mentioned, we made sure in our first three sprints, we were able to load data, show an API explorer, and push it out there um, for, for, to get the garner feedback as quickly as possible uh, from our internal teams, from some partners we could. And therefore, we can then build, iterate, and test. As I mentioned, right, we went from January 1st to September 1st, and we released the very first version. Um, and then we could show results very quickly because we tracked everything, uh, all our upline management could see what make, how things were making a difference, our product teams can see things, how we're making a difference because we can actually show them uh, these things. So um, those are kind of the takeaways I wanted to leave people with as well. And one more thing I wanted to shout out to is all the people. This was the people that worked on it, right? I didn't have a huge army of like, you know, 50 people to build this, right? This was it, um, a small set of people, very focused, very aligned, right? Because we set a North Star, we set what metrics that we wanted to collect to prove if we were doing the right thing or the wrong thing, and then we were quickly able to change direction if we needed to. If this feature wasn't working or it didn't make a sense, we got rid of it. And we also were very good at prioritizing and said, you know what, we need to focus on the core. If it's not to the core, then it doesn't matter. Uh, so I want to get all these people a big thank you as well as you, you see here. So um, with that, uh, uh, that concludes uh, my presentation.